This video was made possible by Squarespace. Build your website for 10% off at squarespace.com slash H-A-I. There are a lot of frontiers out there. Canada, Kansas, but space is the final frontier that I'm mentioning. The United States, of course, was the first to the moon in 1969. The US is no stranger to winning. No country has won more Super Bowls, but after the moon landings, the country wanted to continue being the best in space. Mainly, they wanted to prove that humans could live for extended periods in space without dying in preparation for the imminent mission to Mars taking off in 1989 taking off in 1995, taking off whenever Elon Musk stops tweeting about mason jars. NASA launched Skylab into space on a Saturn V rocket in 1973. The station was essentially a scientific lab in the sky built to house those who would break the record for the longest time spent in space, and it was pretty plush. With about 1,600 square feet of living space for three people, Skylab was quite literally larger than the average New York City apartment. I guess you can say Manhattan real estate prices really are astronomical. Oh, come on, writer, that's just pathetic. Skylab was built to carry out experiments in space, but on another level, the mission as a whole was an experiment on long-term living in orbit. There were subtle design choices made to make Skylab feel more homely. Each astronaut had their own bedroom, they would eat together around a communal table, and in keeping with the American governmental tradition of making things as complicated and confusing as possible, they named the first mission to the station Skylab 2. Those astronauts launched on May 25, 1973 and stayed in orbit for 28 days and then, soon after, on July 28, Skylab 3, the second mission, launched, which lasted a longer 59 days. Then came Skylab 4, the third Skylab mission. This would be the last and longest of the three missions. It launched on November 16, 1973, and before the astronauts even arrived at the station, their schedules were packed with all the experiments NASA wanted to complete before Skylab closed for good. Each day on the station was worth about $70 million, or as an American would call it, the cost of an average hospital visit, so the crew was scheduled not down to the hour, or half hour, or even minute. They were scheduled down to increments of 30 seconds. Each second of each astronaut's day was worth $270. Each toilet break was worth thousands of dollars. These were some expensive shifts, work, work shifts. Skylab 4 was planned to be in orbit for 84 days, and despite the longer mission length, their days were as packed as those on the shorter Skylab 2 and 3 missions. For the first 40 days of the mission, the crew went without a single rest day to keep up with the busy schedule. All the different scientists at NASA were pressuring Mission Control to make sure their experiments would get completed before Skylab closed, and so Mission Control was pressuring the crew to work more and more hours. They were also tasked with completing spacewalks, but the astronauts reported that there was no pressure during these. Nonetheless, the astronauts had had enough. They just couldn't take it anymore. It wasn't that they needed space, they had plenty of that, they just needed some time to rest. Despite Mission Control having a busy day planned for the astronauts, on December 28, 1973, the Skylab crew turned off their radios and relaxed during the first ever strike in space. The most fascinating part of this all, though, was that they weren't even French. This day on strike actually generated important data for the real experiment going on in Skylab, on how long humans could live in space. As it turned out, the strike actually improved productivity. Despite being days behind schedule at the beginning of the mission, the crew finished every single scheduled experiment by the end, even with the longer rest periods they negotiated during the strike. NASA used what they learned to improve crew scheduling for future missions, and today enforces mandatory rest periods on the International Space Station. Looking back, it's a bit unclear how purposeful this mutiny was. The astronauts certainly did get in trouble once they landed back on Earth, and none of them flew again, but NASA has been sparse on details of this rather embarrassing moment in their history. While the crew definitely did go on strike for a day, some say that the loss of radio contact was just due to the astronauts failing to properly schedule their radio manning duties. Others, including much of the press at the time, said this was a purposeful action done to spite the mission controllers. Whether this was purposeful or not, it's probably good it happened because it played an integral part in developing one of mankind's greatest triumphs. Another half as interesting video. Now, for all legal purposes, space follows maritime law, and according to the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, piracy is defined as any illegal acts of violence or detention on a ship, which is what these astronauts purportedly did. They illegally detained the ship, which made them the first ever space pirates. 
Obviously, they're out of jobs now and when they're dead, but if they do need new careers, they can lay claim to the best band name ever, Space Pirates. For this, they obviously need a website since this is the 21st century, and they obviously should build that website with Squarespace. Not because it's called Squarespace, but because it's the best place to build any website. They have a fully customizable website builder, beautiful designer templates, 24-7 super helpful customer support, and built-in search engine optimization, which will help people find you. If you have a business or want to, you should definitely have a website because the phone book has sort of fallen out of fashion, but best of all, you can try Squarespace for free at squarespace.com slash HAI, and then when you're ready to launch, use the offer code HAI for 10% off.